the head full of houses, and the second one is the catalogue of walls. As usual, between them, there will be some interval with monumental sculpture. There was going to be a drawing, but I'm still working at it. It was a drawing leading, as usual, to many others. It was a drawing, it is a drawing of a head with horizontal layers of the different families of houses that I've invented, reinterpreted, or copied. The drawings will lead to paintings and sculptures. These may later turn into architecture. Perhaps they were already architecture and I didn't know. I had not been told. Or the drawings may become portraits of buildings overnight. Or, or there is no established order, no pattern. It is Russian roulette. That is the name of the game. English is a delightful language. It can be heard in a number of ways. A head full of houses, a head full of houses. I, the head, I who turned head almost two years ago. I, the fool of houses. Fool, because that's what architects are, fools. We fool around with space traps, stage sets, facades, plans, details, drawings, photographs, ideas and memories of our most photogenic and foolish constructions. We make architecture with the help of mirrors, sights and memories in black and white and in alpha chrome. By reproductions, by transplantations, by seances at our drawing boards where we are visited by the ghosts of the illustrious dead. Fools because we go on longing for some scientific absolute conclusion to our concentric meanderings our absurd adventures and escapades. My slides and words are about some of the houses I have copied, reinterpreted or invented, reproductions of other architects' houses, variations of some of my own previous houses, partial and total inventions of my own to illustrate various ideas and demonstrate that buildings do not happen like immaculate conceptions. They do not happen out of their briefs, but like people, buildings grow out of each other. There is also, to begin with, a number of quick sights of families of other houses which I will not have time to demonstrate this evening. They will remain, I hope, like rough sand in your minds to remind you later that I am always also another. The houses I will demonstrate are out of my second book, The Villas of the Sommershield, in a city that no longer exists, Lorenzo's city, Lorenzo Marx. The city Peter Smithson thinks is named after the Marx brother's kid brother. <laughs> Carl's dark cousin. Five houses growing out of each other, plus one in Ilova. The people I invented these houses for are quite wonderful people, hard-working professional people, mostly doctors and businessmen, most of the houses were built 10 to 15 years too late. They had to buy the ground, they had to save enough money to make a start, and the children grew too fast. The people I made these houses with are wonderful people. They are carpenters and masons, craftsmen, skilled in the building traditions of southern Europe, transplanted to the east coast of Africa, over a period of 400 years via Mozambique Island, my stepmother country. The lunatic raft of sand and coral shipwrecked in a bay in northern Mozambique, where bush lords, adventurers, warriors, nobles and priests tampered with symmetries, Serlio, Florence, Rome, and their own memories of the mother country and its reflections, mirror images in Brazil and India. These houses are the houses of the late colonial bourgeoisie, now stolen and abandoned, except for the Almeida Duval house, where the old retired doctor goes on living alone with the cannibal Alsatians, barricaded behind barbed wire, iron bars and bolts.
the Adi the mirror. The Luis de Souza house, which you see on these two slides, was nicknamed the House of Giraffes. It was a very early house in Lorenzo Marx with concrete roofs, concrete triangular roofs, and the view of the giraffes from the back and of a single giraffe. The houses that you see looking at the giraffe are a group of row houses that I did, and in between there are another two or three houses that I did as well. And these are the Frank Lloyd Wright houses in Lorenzo Marx. They, when I finished at university, I bought Hitchcock's book, In the Nature of Material, for 36 shillings. And um, although I've never been to Oak Park, I feel I know these houses better than if I saw them, in the way that one knows Picasso and Brigitte Bardot and Catherine Deneuve and <laughs> Mr. Wilson better through the photographs <laughs> and through the plans. Another of the Frank Lloyd Wright houses, a later example. But these are really other stories. And a house as a machine habité, a symbolic functionalist house, which is part of another family of houses. This is a house on split level with a car porch underneath and all the various rooms and spaces and the roof terrace. There were quite a number of these houses as well. And the colonial bungalow type of house, again another family. This, a photograph of it just being completed and the elevations of the bungalow. And the house on the right, the house stepping down the hill, it's two houses riding one behind the other and turning and twisting to look down towards the sea at the view. The house standing in front was also another house, part of another family of houses of segmental houses. And a close-up of the house on the left and the back